Now we have been spending hours developing the concept called equilibrium constant. Why? What is the use of it? Okay, there must be some use why we are doing that. And we'll 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 explore explore the use of of that very uh, equilibrium constant. But before that, we we summarize the important characteristics of the equilibrium constant. Okay, so important characteristics of equilibrium constant. Casey. Now number one is, we know that it is related to the concentrations of the products and reactants at equilibrium, right? So if you want to find out the equilibrium constant, you wait till you find no perceptible changes in the concentration of the reactant and obviously the product, product will also settle down likewise and then you start the calculation for the equilibrium constant. Okay, not before that, fine. So, so the expression of Kc and, and what is that Kc? Kc is actually the, the kind of this, right? Okay, kind of this for a reaction. Like this, right. So the expression of Kc is applicable, is applicable only when only when the concentrations are calculated at equilibrium. Okay, not before that. The second thing is that Now, it, it does not depend on where you started from, right? You keep on changing the initial concentrations. Say, this. You start with any concentration. You start with reactant, you start with product, you change the, change the concentrations, ultimately, the value of Kc simply does not depend on the concentrations, right? It won't depend on the concentrations. The concentrations will be different, but this thing, obviously they will be individually different, even at the, even at the steady state, even at the equilibrium, they will be different. Don't expect the individual concentrations to be the same. Don't make that mistake. It's a trap. We are not saying that the concentrations at equilibrium will be the same. They cannot be. Let us say once I start with say 0.4 mole and, and, and the, at the other time I start with, with them N2 and H2 as 0.1 mole per liter, then obviously 0.1 mole will only decrease. It just cannot become 0.4. So the individual concentrations may differ, but the whole thing, this, Okay, the expression for Kc that won't change. So Kc is independent of initial concentrations. Independent of initial concentrations. Okay. of 
the reactants and products. Now the value of the concentration equilibrium constant that is dependent on temperature. Okay, so whatever value are being given side by side you have to be specified you have to specify the temperature at which you have taken that value. Okay, so Kc is dependent on is dependent on temperature. It is dependent on temperature. So to find, okay. find the value of Kc for a different temperature, we have to first find Kp. No, no, no. Even Kp is specified at the same temperature. Nothing. So how to find? There is a different equation for that. There is a different equation for that. Okay. And we know that Kc for the reverse reaction. Yes. No, <laughs> fine. But what you are being given is at that that definite temperature. Understand? See, you will be holding the reaction at a particular temperature. So you will have equilibrium, equilibrium concentrations at that temperature. So related to that, whatever Kc you get will be at that given temperature. See, either you are given the Kc at a particular temperature. So that is specified. Or, or you are given the temperature at which the equilibrium concentrations have appeared, right? You will be given the temperature at which the equilibrium concentrations are given. Then you can find out Kc. Then that Kc will hold for that temperature. But if I change the temperature, things will start changing. So Kc for the reverse reaction is, reverse reaction is reciprocal is reciprocal of the forward reaction. And the one of the things was that Kc for the reaction multiplied by a constant multiplied by a constant becomes becomes Kc say dash for the reaction multiplied by a constant say n becomes Kc to the power n. Now that we have summarized this, we come to the real applications of applications of equilibrium constant. Okay. So the first application is that it is used to predict the extent of the extent of the forward or reverse reaction to predict the extent of the reaction okay now we'll soon see that this extent of the reaction depends on the magnitude of A depends on the magnitude of K. We will soon see that. Okay. 
of on the magnitude of KCS. Okay. It also predicts the direction of reaction. To predict the direction of reaction. Okay. And the third and the most important is to calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Okay, we'll soon see them one by one.